Without any further ado, we're being joined by our first guest of the evening, no stranger to, to us here, Kate Side Submission, King of the Cage, Adam Lee Champion, Andy the Crazen win. You know, Andy's riding a, a three fight uh, winning streak now, successfully defending her King of the Cage title last time out, avenging the prior loss to, to B Win. So uh, let's give it up for Andy. What's up, my friend? How we doing? Hey, what's up? What's going on? Uh, I'm I'm awesome, awesome. You know, you know, you know. Had some uh, local MMA here Friday night here here in Philly. Caught the uh, pay per view last night. How about you? How's everything doing with you? I know you've been uh, running around with uh, Andrea as per usual. You guys, uh, you know, seen some photos. You guys there on vacation, having, kicking it up, having some fun. What are you? Uh, when are you gonna start? When are we gonna hear uh, about Andy's next uh, next fight announcement? Or or uh, are we still taking some time off? Man, I'm not taking any time off. Do I ever take any time off? <laughs> no, no, no. You're, you're so, e- well, even when you're training. taking time off, you're still training. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, the month of May went by so fast. May 6th, I defended my belt against B. Win, and then um, Mother's Day weekend, May 12th, I treated myself to Miami by myself. Uh, that's my Mother's Day weekend. <laughs> I did not want to be around my kid. <laughs> Um, let's see, and then the week, the weekend after that was May twentieth, Kansas City. I watched Andrew win a split decision. It was a hard fight because you know she was fighting through an injury. And then May twenty seventh, Chelsea did her MMA debut in Trinidad. So that was partially work and partially um, vacation. And then uh, she came up this weekend to Louisiana to train with us because she picked up another fight in the next two three weeks. So. She drove me back. She kidnapped me to Mississippi, and now I'm in Mississippi. And we literally just finished sparring. And I was like, I, was like, I got to get on the interview at 7:30, so let's start trading. <laughs> Luckily, it's not a hey, big podcast because I'm like sweaty <laughs> as hell. <laughs> yeah, well, better watch out because we're we're working on that. That's gonna be next, Andy. We're we're gonna have to get get you all hot and sweaty on, on the video one of these Whoa. days. And no, you sickos, not like that. Before anyone says anything, no, you freaking sicko. It's not like that. <laughs> oh, man, can you, like, Photoshop me or something? <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that's something you Green could screen. do. You know, even if we do do a video, we can we can get Brad to, to just put the photo up so we don't have to have to see you all all um, hot and sweaty and, and, and whatnot after uh, a long training session. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, according to Twitter, Adam Wade does nothing. We would, we would never oh, pull man. any numbers anyway. Yeah, dude, and, and, and my phone is still going off from that earlier. So so for people who don't know what Andy's talking about, you know, we were, you know, I put out the tweet that, that Andy was going to be on, and, you know, someone mentioned, just made some tweet that was just like, hey, you know, Dana, you know, we got, we got you know, Andy here. You know, one of the better atom weights that we have out there, one of the more remarkable atom weights that we have out there. Let's talk about getting the atom weights in the UFC. And, you know, one of these guys who are, you know, on Twitter, literally basically, you know, basically self-admitted that he just really doesn't pay attention to those weight classes. We're just saying that it, it wouldn't sell. I'm like, well, wait a minute. What are you talking about, dude? I mean, outside of Andy, there are plenty of other atom weights who are very successful, and I guess also people also Steve, tend to forget Steve. that. Go ahead, Adam. Go a, ahead, guy, a guy a guy, that doesn't follow Adam Waits saying it doesn't sell. How the hell does he know <laughs> if it sells or not if he doesn't follow but it? But that's what we were saying. We're like, listen, like, dude, like you're talking about something that you just have no knowledge yeah. or even that done the research well, to say, hey, you know, it's just I, basically well, I'm just taking my opinion and I'm going to run with my opinion and that's what I'm going to go by. You Word. can't pay attention to people like that with only 200 followers on Twitter. And, you know, <laughs> and, you know if, if he did follow me, he would be every night. He would be waiting for pictures for me to post. And <laughs> he's so ignorant. Um, to tell you the truth, there Ooh. are some plans coming up. So I will be defending my belt again August 12th, and the opponent's to be determined. So there's no flyer. There's no post yet because. I don't want to talk about it if I don't have an opponent yet. I don't want to be like, oh, i got to fight. But no, you, know, no you don't have to talk about it. You have a date. You don't have a face. It's not actually a fight. So you have a face and a name. Yes, exactly. And then um, for that guy that doesn't know anything, the first <laughs> woman Grand Prix tournament ever will be Adam Waits for Ryzen, and I am on it. So the open round will start in October, and I also – I don't know the exact date in October. That's also to be determined, but I am on the open round. So he could kiss my ass. 
ways lined up. It's just, you know, it's, it's oh, just being patient. Man. You know, staying healthy, keeping your cardio, but, heart but rate here's up. The thing, I, like when you go and look, like Andy, when you go and look, not just here in the United States, I'm just talking about globally when, when we're talking about women's MMA, and like when you look at at how things played out, like when you look at everything, is like you know the UFC did everything so backwards. And granted, everyone so talking about the UFC, but they just should have been 105, 125, 135 is what they should have started out with. But they did 35 mm-hmm. straw weight, then then now fly weight. It's just no, no, no. Mat- they did 135, you know. 115, 145 was not successful. Then they went down to 125. They did yeah, 145 well, with no fighters either. Is successful because they yeah. only have one, one fighter on the roster that's a 45. They're like, oh, let's do 40, 145. How many fighters I do you have? Two. I okay, great. Consider it, I, I will not consider it a weight class until they sign other 45ers. It is not a weight yeah. class with one person. I'm sorry. I, I, yeah. Yeah, one person doesn't want to fight the baddest woman on the planet. <laughs> I know. That's funny. Now here's the thing: like, some people see it as fear, but I want to take it uh, take it an, uh, another route. What your what your main the Ramley is doing? And do I agree with it? Not really. But she's also the first person who's openly is she using Chris's prior transgressions against her? Possibly, but you know. If, if if a fighter actually has a voice to say, you know what, this fighter's you know a known cheater, and I'm just not gonna fight her, him, her, whoever, regardless, of like you know, you know what what if uh you know you know like like they had Vitor on last night, for everyone knows who you know what Vitor was about for a period of time in his career, and who's to sit there and say like you know Vitor says he's coming back for five more fights, he's gonna go call out you know Sam Alvey, Sam Alvey's be like you know what. That dude is, has toxic fluid running through his veins, and I don't want nothing to do with that. Are we going to view Sam Alvey the way we're viewing Jermaine Durandy? No, because there's a title on the line. You do yeah. have a smile when, every, when, we're, when we all talk about it. But he, if you think about it, Jermaine's the first person, uh, the first fighter for anything to say, you know, I, I don't want to fight this person because, because they, they've abused performance enhancing drugs in the past. Do I agree with it? Not really, but I get where she's trying to come from with it, and I think it, it's not the right time to try to pull off something like that. She doesn't quite have the clout to do something like that to pull it off. So pro- is she going to be stripped of it? More than likely. But I'm not saying she's 100% wrong about it either. It's just how she went about it was totally wrong. <clears throat> yeah. I mean – Andy, for for argument's sake, let's say you know you you do some research on this next opponent, and you find find out that you know this person is just suspended X amount of time for failing drug testing. Work. Wouldn't you feel some type of way about it too? Just you know, hypothetically speaking. Yeah, I mean, I I, I would, you know, but uh, I mean, it's kind of hard for somebody to be an atom weight though, 105 pounds on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I know. Really sure. That, like, I, I, I'm putting myself to think the about person it. had like, a skeleton before, before getting into mixed martial arts competition. I look like a skeleton all the way in before, so <laughs> I, I've been I've been uh, accused. I'm like, uh, uh, really accused? What do you think? I started off at 75 pounds or something? Whatever. Yeah. I don't I don't really care. Hey, but that, hey, Andy, I, I want to ask you too. Um, as you get older, you know your body changes and everything. And is that weight cut? Is that brutal for you now? Or was it easier when you were younger, or is it just the same? Uh, well, when I was younger, I didn't really weight cut. My amateur days, I didn't cut at all. I just I just fought the weight I was walking at. So right. once I turned pro and and learned the diet, well, I've always ate good, but learned the water trick and stuff like that and, and followed um, Donnie Aaron's Karate Mafia's program, and then I mm-hmm. knew my body, how to do it. It didn't. This last weight cut wasn't not was not hard. It just looked like I was skeleton because I was so much leaner now. I don't have as much fat, and it's the same weight. It's just that I look like a real skeleton more than the, the last time before because I'm leaner now. I I just didn't have a lot of fat on me, and so I look more like a like you know how Joanna Jezebel when she cuts weight. I look like a skeleton, but um, and obviously I performed fine. I I, I thought uh I thought it was going to be a, a problem too because I usually do get an IV. And um, I didn't get an IV that day. I did everything old school. I had to do everything orally. And I looked like I could have went for another round. I, I didn't gas. And, um, you know, it, it was fine. Yeah. It's weird because I don't know because 
because I know my time is ticking and it's like, fuck, you know, like, damn it. But then am I peaking? Like, am I really peaking or am I, am I up my highest no, right now? It doesn't look I, like I don't it. know. Yeah, it's not it's like, like, like I'm slowing down anytime soon. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I was going to ask you too. I, you, I don't know if you remember, but I remember interviewing you back in the warfare days. Now, I, I saw you fight on those cards. Did they those count at all? I mean, were those? Because I don't yeah, see them here. On, uh, they're, they're, they're amateur. I looked fights. on your amateur uh, uh, record, and I'm just like, man, where the hell are the warfare fights? It probably didn't say fun- warfare, but but it was 125 pounds. Uh, just mean Ali twice. Uh, Melissa Timmer, uh, Alexa exactly. Connor. Yeah, it, it doesn't say warfare. But but those girls are on there on technology. It just it probably just doesn't say warfare. And I was gonna ask you too. I, I heard a warfare is coming back. Is that true? Or they already they just, came back? Yeah, they just they just had their fight again the same day. The same fight that uh, I fought on May sixth. Okay. So yeah, and everybody said my fight was better than their show. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah, you got some revenge. How does revenge feel? <laughs> Oh man, it was great to be her first win and her first loss. It's such a finesse. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> you know, I was down about that loss and everything, and I think I held back way too much. We were friends. I never fought a friend before on a professional scale like that, and and uh, to to come back and and really dominate it the way I did with you know uh, stand up. I wish I wish Cecile would have let us let her work on the ground a little bit. I mean. It, they, it looked like it was favoritism, but when she got mounted, you know, and I flipped her over, so he let her work when it's a, a dominant position, when she's really doing something. But if it's just a stalling, I wish they, I wish people could have seen, because I have been working on my ground, too, and my scrambles, uh, they would have gotten to see uh, a lot more of a well-rounded person instead of only my stand-up, you know. Um, but it felt great out there, and, and uh, it was my first professional five rounds, five minutes, and yeah, it felt great. <laughs> so I and I know I thought everybody. Was... I thought everybody, and I know from now on how it feels. And nobody in our in my division in King of the Cage, none of the females have ever gone five rounds. So they're coming into my world. Whoever's going to fight me next. Nice. I thought yeah. it was funny because you look on social media afterwards, and they're like, uh, basically that Cecil Peoples was 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 being favoritism toward towards you. I'm like, wait, how is he being favoritism towards? <laughs> Freaking Andy here! He, I'm like, he stood, you know he stood what? Me up I'm too. like, social media trolls just go too far sometimes. I swear to God. Oh yeah, but, but you, if you remember, I was in her guard, hammer fisting her, and he stood us up. What? He ha- yeah, he stood oh my up. Gosh, he, stood, he stood me up when I was on the ground. So it, it wasn't favoritism. Um, it's just that she wasn't busy enough in his eyes, you know. And he was already back in the in the rules meeting. He 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 deliberately said, "If I am roughing your fight and if you take it to the ground, I need you to be busy, really busy." And he said that very clearly. And and, and I think some of the people that, that had him before agree that he does stand him up easily. It's not a favoritism thing. He stand him up pretty fast. Yeah, I just felt that he he's always done that. Just because of people, I think people tend to forget that he comes from that. Um, that boxing, boxing background, so yeah. So like, um, unless you're really, you know, you're you're really active, then he's probably not going to know. Like, you know, for somebody who's been involved with grappling for ten, fifteen years, he, even though he's been refing and judging MMA fights for a while, he he's not going to know that you're working to set this up or or working to set that up. So yeah, he doesn't he, know what the set, setup is. Yeah, that's just he. You know what? He like let, let's go. <laughs> But, yeah. yeah. At least, so, so but right. at least he's honest and he tells you up front, like, this is what I, I need to see from you. At least that, that's a fact. Yeah. Threat. So everybody knew backstage already. It'd well, be different if he didn't say anything, he, and then you're like, what? So we got. Uh, looks like we got Daniel uh, uh, in queue here. I think he's uh, he's waiting to ask Miss uh, Miss Win a question here. Let's uh, let's get Daniel on here and see what he's got to say. Big D, what's up, brother? It's Daniel. How you doing? <laughs> How you doing, brother? How you feeling? Oh, I'm feeling great. I just got I just got back and trained. I've been it's been a three month layoff, and I'm I'm oh, just wow. back. I'm sore. I'm sore. I just feel great. <laughs> it's great to be back. 
So obviously I'm serious. I've been. I, for Andy. Yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, Andy, how, how, first of all, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Half just, just happy. And, and I do have a question. You know, how, what does it feel like to be in, in Ryzen? Like, uh, not only am I looking at that, like, what, but Ryzen is basically the, the re incarnate version of Prime C, but you were there as well as the, the new, one of the, the new female fires. Not like that, you, you were kind of representing Louisiana in some way. How does it feel to just be, be like, I was like the second fight card. How is it, how did, how did it feel? Like, tell me what was your experience besides winning the fight in the Ryzen? It's a, it's a modern day pride. And um, the Japanese fans are so conservative and so nerdy and so sweet. They're not obnoxious, drunk, like, like the UFC fighters. you like, get up, killer, killer, and throwing beer and drunk. No. It's like an opera. They're, like, standing really quiet or sit there really quiet. When they see a nice move, they're like, whoo, and they clap, and then they go back to, like, watching it. It's so it's, – it's really different. Um and then I did not only represent Louisiana. I was repping America because I had the flag on my arm, and I came out to American Women by Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> and uh, nice. I fought in front of 36,000 people. That walkout was really, really, really cool. Um, the, the boxing uh, ring was cool, too. We, we got to uh, warm up around it, so I kind of felt it. And, um the the opening ceremony we're backstage and you know they already told us that there's gonna be fireworks it's not gonna harm you and when they introduce all the fighters you're standing there I totally forgot about the fireworks and when they and they fired it I jumped up and I almost like slipped off the ramp and nobody saw though because because the, the cameras are towards looking at the fireworks it's something else man it's it's really really something else um I I flew there December 26th so the day after Christmas. And I only had like four or five days to adjust the time difference because I was fighting basically three thirty, four o'clock American time AM, like three, four in the morning, like in American time. And uh, that was tough because I was drinking oh, wow. coffee and doing cardio around that time in American time zone in my brain. So then I could be prepared for what's going to happen that day at Ryzen. So that was, that was a little, that was a little rough, but, um, I liked it a lot. The fans are so sweet. Uh, they 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 treat you really, really, really well. Um, and you know, they pay you really, really well. I, I love Verizon. I can't wait to go back in October. Yeah, I heard That's hey, great, real Dad. quick, Dan, hey, Daniel, real quick, I, hey, Andy. I heard you're going to be fighting Gabby uh, the next time you go to Verizon. <laughs> Shit! If, if they pay me enough, I will. If they pay me enough, I will, I will go in here. And, and get tapped real fast, and I still get paid. <laughs> you know, I met her in real life, and she is such a sweetheart. Like, like, yeah, like she a seems baby. Like a nice lady. Like a really like a baby. Like she she baby talks, <laughs> and you wouldn't think. Oh so. wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's That's all like the same a, thing. It's, like it's, when it's, people have like this notion about cyborg, and that, that she's just this big mean person. But <laughs> if anyone who's ever spent like. Five minutes with, with, with Chris Cyborg on the things like, like she's like the the kindest you know she's she's just like a a teddy bear when you think about it. I mean, I she, might, she might be I able. Would, Go ahead, Andy. I wish I, I would have videotaped Cyborg and Gab uh, warming up in the backstage because they were in my room, and then you would be uh, like, "Holy shit! Like, there's a big <laughs> size difference." Uh. Well, yeah, like, like I, I mean, dude, like, like you know, uh, everyone just remembers Gabby from w- when she helped uh, Vondelay on on the season of the Ultimate Fighter League coach, but just don't realize the work that she's gone through from that time to get where she's at now. She's ha- like literally half the person she was when she was on the show, and she's still uh, a physically. scary, terrifyingly big human being. Yeah, and she, she is. makes Chris look like a dwarf. Yeah. Which is the crazy part about it. <laughs> yeah, but you're you are right. Uh, Cyborg is nice too. You know, I they're they're all nice people. We, I yeah, am. I'm now, nice. You're 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 too nice to people sometimes, Andy. Like some, exactly. some sometimes when you get these weird weirdos, you you need to you need to pull out your I don't I don't get I don't I don't give a fuck, Andy, and, and just <laughs> let, let them have it. 
because you know what? The, the, the people are just going to keep doing it. That's all That's all they keep doing. Like, unless you... Yeah, like, you just, you know, I ignore them. Like, you know, I, just, I, I hate to say, it's like, you know, Twitter, when you get, when you get a situation mean, like what Chris Cyborg had, when you get a chance to freaking put the freaking loudmouth bully in their face, you go and do it regardless of the consequence. Because, you know what? Yeah. There is no re- there's no recourse for it. You know, but see, look. We're talking about no. some... some See, with Cyborg, though, Messi you some crazy nuts. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Go ahead. Steve. <laughs> but yeah. when when somebody spit shit at Cyborg, she punched her, and now she's wanting to sue her. Yeah. Well, that's because she's a freaking childish human being, but we've already touched oh base on God. that last, last, yeah. last week. But Brad wasn't here last week to kind of vent his frustrations on the situation, so. Yeah, sorry, Andy. No, you're fine. <laughs> hey, Andy, real quick, uh, what, what – I know, I haven't been to Miami in a long time, and I know like you go there, you let your spot. Um, what do you do when you get there? Where do you go? What clubs? I don't go to nightclubs, man. I'm too old for that. I, oh, I do comedy. Okay. I do comedy shows, and yeah. I do I do I rather do day drinking and watch like hot go go dancers just dance in front of me. I, I swear to God, they thought I was gay. They're like, right, are you into women? I'm like, no. I just enjoy the beauty of it. I could dance with her, you know, and uh, that was funny because I was like the only one there, and, uh, not me, not the only one there, but I was like the single person sitting there and just enjoying. And I just, I was just enjoying myself there. It's just you know the nice breeze, being on the beach, blah blah yeah. blah. So you know, I did not go any nightclubs, so I wouldn't know what nightclubs to tell you. Uh, you do need to go to a comedy show, though, and um, that's more my speed because yeah. you know I'm 40 now, and the, like the club scene that exactly. all went out a long, that went out a long time ago. So yeah, um, I'm but, a happy hour okay. type of person. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. yeah, drink early, go to bed early, kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, go back exactly. and watch well, a movie or something. When you, when I, I'm I'm sure that 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 when uh, she's there in Louisiana, she's gonna ha- she has Andrea ripping her out of bed early in the morning. Okay, time to go for a run. I, yeah, I'm right. Sleep, but let me let, let me sleep. Nope, let's go. <laughs> yeah, right. I am up by six thirty, and she's and she's always coming in the kitchen. Why are you up so early? And I'm like, I don't know. I can't I can't hold it. So actually, I'm the one that wake up at six thirty. She she did good this morning though. She we left the house by eight. And then we did our cardio circuit. We have a photo shoot coming up, so um, we're we're starting our 2018 calendars because 2017 was really successful. So we wanna we wanna continue this if we can make money because this, this is our full time job. Fighting is full time, so yeah. the calendars help a little bit promotional here and there helps you know. So that's exactly what we're doing. Trying to yeah, slim you know, down. Well, no, I, and Andy, well, Andy, Andy, I know why. Go ahead, brother. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I know why she's like wakes up late and everything. She's only twenty eight years old. Wait till she hits her thirties and everything. She'll start waking oh up the crack God. of dawn. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know, I know, but, I know uh, how that goes. But I, I got, I gotta, I gotta ask you. You know, you, you know, you're, you're, you're with her all, all the time behind the scenes and all that. The, you know, obviously she signed the, uh, the new, the, the new fight contract with, uh, with, with Invicta, despite the fact that. The UFC is opening up the the flyweight division and all that. Do, do you think that the UFC would have to really blow blow Andrea away with an offer for her to kind of leave the opportunity she has right now? The the setup that she has with Invicta is perfect because she can still go and fight for 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 her legacy. She can you know you know continue to to build her way up to to win that Invicta title as well and you know still be free to kind of have whatever sponsor she has. Or you know is the UFC one one of the the the, goal, the goals here. Well, we know that sooner or later the UFC is going to give her a call. We, we already know that in our heart. So the thing is, we we have to figure out about this back injury first. So that's why she signed with Invicta because she she could have some time off and they know what's going on too, and she could defend her LFA title. She can't do that if she's in the UFC. UFC, that's it. I mean, she can't go. She can't do. She can't fight anywhere else. So that gives her yep. a couple more fights. And um, they offered her a, like a, a, better, a better pay, and you know she she gets to fight and and uh, get a little bit more experience before she gets thrown in the UFC. But um, she's definitely going to go in there. We just we're just, we're being patient, and she's a family girl. She loves her daughters, so that's why she didn't get in the tough house either. Plus, she just fought. Yeah, yeah, well, that would have been yeah, really. Yeah. I think that would have been really. I think that would have set her up for. 
at least an emotional letdown. Because even if if she was very successful on the show, she would have that other side of her that was just like, you know, wor- wor- worried about the kids and, and what's going on with this and what's going on with that. That She's not know, drama she at just, all either. Yeah, she, yeah and that's the Praise other thing the I Lord. think that, that – that that I think that, you know, might have been, you know, I think this is a kind of a blessing in disguise kind of situation. Yeah, she, yeah. she may not be, because, uh, like, a lot of us, a lot of us who've been following the flyweights around for, for a long time, we're like, hey, you know, it's, um you know, this is something that, that you know, you know, a lot of, you know, me and, 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 and Mark Picos from, from, uh, from Wombat, we've always said that when it came down to it, it should be uh, Andrea and, uh, Caitlin Cook, uh, Chokagian to fight for that inaugural title. Now, obviously, with everything that's going on, that that's not going to happen. And there's a probably good argument that Caitlin's probably not going to be in it because if I remember correctly, she's been dealing with some injuries on her side of things as well. So, actually, I think you know, my, my, in my opinion, I hope that that's something we we do eventually see. But uh, you know, I want it to have title implications. It's, I, I don't know if it's the selfish part of me or not. You know, I, I want to see that fight again, but. Would it mean something, not just for the sake of having it, and uh, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, I, I'm with you. It's just a matter of time before they uh, pick up the phone and uh, offer her a contract. And I, I just hope that it's it's not one of these, you know, whatever. I think that they better make it worth her while. She's already beat half the people that was in the in that um, tryout for the tough, you know. So she's being patient. There's yep. no way. There's no. There's no point. There's no point for her to be in a rush and go in that. Yeah. To put in that in, be, environment when she doesn't need to. Yeah. Why be away from your family if you love being with your family? Let somebody else go through that brutal how many weeks it is. Become champion oh, yeah. you know, or whatever, and then she could just go and face a champ or whatever. So. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, yeah. That's a smart move. Very. You know, unless you're sick of your kids. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I couldn't even imagine imagine her ever being <laughs> sick of her kids. I just can't. Man, she, uh, she's uh, not. <laughs> it was a joke. Now, um, now as we get ready to uh, wrap things up here and uh, and and get our next guest on, Andy, you you know, stranger, you know what goes on here. You know, give the proverbial microphone to you. Anyone you would like to thank, training partners, teammates. Uh, Shoot out your social media sites, websites, your, any sponsors you might have, charities you're working with, the time is yours. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Cage Side Submissions, for ha- uh, having me back on. And uh, uh, let's see, if you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm Andy the Crazian One, Snapchat the Crazian One, Instagram Andy the Crazian One. Basically, if you just Google Andy the Crazian, it'll just pop up. Um, my new website is andywin.org. Uh, thank you for all my sponsors. Uh, and um, um, I'll be glad to come back whenever you guys uh, – let's, let's come back uh, once we find an opponent before August 12th. 